Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just uh, mechanical buttons, and then when they are pushed down to provide the uh, signals, one from zero, and then it will just by the contacts of the uh, surfaces, you have to think in nanosecond scale, and then that will bounce a couple times, and finally stay at the uh, rising voltage, and then when you release it, it's the same, it comes down, it may bounce, and then inject the, inject at the edges, and finally it rests on the uh, zero voltage. So the threshold has been crossed a couple times, and then that's why the counting here does not seem to be right. As you can see, if I push, this time it's fine, five, and then push it again, six, and then it becomes nine upon release, and then zero becomes four upon release, and then jump to six, and then seven is five, and then nine, and then zero, and then one upon release, and then jump to three upon push. So this is not what the uh, program code is written. Uh, Empo using the uh, the button pin 182 as the IN in, and the pin 44 is the real clock, and the char is the seven segment LED. Uh, how to program that is in one of the previous video, and held and filtered are the two extra registers that we're going to observe. And now we have this um, count 9 that can count from 0 through over 9, but we want to use just uh, the counting from 0 through 9. And there's a delay counter that we can use for certain delays as we know as we will know how to do that. And initially, the count 9 is 0 and always at the cross edge of certain things. As the event, we're going to display the content of the counter count 9. And what we're going to do is use count 9 as the indication of what digits we are ro rolling upon the push of the button. So, always at the pass edge of N, N is the button we're going to count up and then we're going to roll back to zero if it gets to count to ten and then according to the count nine there's a mapping from the value in the counter to bit maps representing the characters zero through nine and if it's out of range we're going, we can display an E for error and of course that shouldn't happen unless your program really went wrong so this is what's happening right now upon the raw input in. We don't get to get precise counting because this input in upon the pass edge is going to fluctuate several times. These uh, cricket buttons, like mouse clicks, they work better. They have better precisions. But even that, you cannot rely on that uh, uh, pristine mechanical nature, they can wear out, and then you still need to have your program to filter, uh, filter the input. So how do we do this? Always at pass edge, real clock, begin, and uh, inside the begin end, there are three cases by the FL statements. Now the master clock operates at 32 MHz. That's what this real clock uh, come from, from pin 44 the real CLK that is. So upon the rising edge, that occurs at uh, every point zero 0.03 microsecond, we're going to do this. So this continuously is being performed. What does it do? The first case is to check if the input IN, that is from the raw input pin 182, one of the red black buttons, and that input signal is now equal to held, H-E-L-D, initially held at zero. So if the input rises, we're going to change the held to be the input signal, the input signal. We're going to withhold that input signal, the new one, that is. And then we reset the counter delay C, and we reset the filter to zero. Filter and held are two single bit registers and they 
mean the current holding value for the input and uh, filter the signal of the input. And the second case is if delay C equal equal 15 binary ones, that's 32k minus 1. If delay C is such a value, that means we have uh, passed the one million second time if we count delay C by one at a time. That means the filter, the signal, is from held. So that means held has not changed for a millisecond. The third case is to upcount delay C by one. Upcount delay C by one. This is, of course, driven by the master clock. If the delay C was reset and then can reach 15 binary ones, that means one millisecond has passed. One millisecond has passed without delay C being reset. That means the raw input has not changed for one millisecond. It's being compared to hell, that is. So it has not been changed. That means the signal has stabilized. Then the filter, the signal can take on held. That's been we held uh, uh, for one millisecond or more. So this is based on the fact that the mechanical button or switches, when you push it or release it, is going to have fluctuating, alternating zero and one signals coming in. And we believe that the cycle of alternation is within one millisecond. One millisecond. And if it's over one millisecond, then it stabilizes. Stabilizes. It's not going to change by itself again unless you push the button. So we have a counter that counts up to one millisecond and said, okay, filter can take on what's being we held. And every time we we hold something, that is the new change, new change from the end uh, compared to the old held. And then we're going to update the held and then reset the counter and then it starts to count again. So this is on the belief that the fluctuation alternating the signals from 0 to 1, 1 to 0 within the 1 millisecond cycle. And if it's over 1 millisecond, then that signal is stabilized. This, of course, depends on the switches, mechanical conditions of the switches. If the switch gets older and the quality is not as good, then you want to increase this counter to much bigger value, say to one hundredth of a second. And here's one millisecond, so that it needs to be uh, ten volts to count up to one hundredth of a second. And it depends on the speed of the master clock. Here is at a point zero three microsecond. So this is the algorithm to check the input and then give out as the filter the input. And this filter the input can drive the following OS always begin end to up count the uh, count nine, another counter that counts from zero to nine for us. In order to map to the one of the ten decimal digits from zero to nine, from zero through nine. This is the uh, pin one eighty two the red button, red button that designated to count. As you can see, one, then two, release three, release four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. So it works pretty well now. So the delay is only uh, one millisecond. Which is pretty good. I mean, most places recommend one hundredth of a second delay, and this is a one millisecond delay. So these buttons are pretty good, uh, pretty precise already. And in the past, we've been using the master clock to count the counter and then take certain bits in the counter when they flip, and that's the time we sample the switch. And that's another way to do it. So like the one of the previous videos that we had these two uh, cricket buttons um, that can be held down to accelerate, decelerate. But if you want to catch the rising edge or the falling edge of a button, then you gotta do it like this program that we've been showing. So the, uh, these two dials, we're going to show you how the, uh, the 
holding time is and the filter out the output. That's what those two dials means. Okay, I'm going to delay the uh, LEDs, the LED diodes, so that you can see the changes. And this is 25 bit of delay count now. I, we need to delay for a second to be able to see the changes of the held and filtered, the two registers. Finally, hold the values correctly and then produce the filtered output. And you can see the uh, the count has to count up to 25 ones, 25 ones. Then the filtered is given the value from what's being held. And this will give us one second delay. So there's a uh, so these two LEDs, as I push it down, you can see these two LEDs will go off. And the other one also go off in one second. So the one the first one is the detection of the change from the old held value, so the held value change. And when it's off, it's one. So that's input, raw input is one. The held LED is on the right side, the corner one. And then that will uh, continue for one second, and then the other one on the left side from being bright to being dim, that means it carries the value from the left side, and that's the filtered output. And then the counter is counting up from 0 to 1 now, using the filter output rising edge as the signal. Okay, so I'm releasing this. Now the uh, alpha release this, and then the, they return to be 0 and 0. Remember with these, these LED dials, they have a reverse, uh, inverse logic, so uh, they are light up, that means 0 and then the switch is now zero. Now I input again, so you see one second from the right side to the left side, it changes because the right side is the held. And then after one second delay, it gives us to the left side filter. And then this acts upon the pass edge of the filter. So this is the raw input, raw input reset. And then I'm going to push it again, push it down. Okay. And then I change the counter to 3. And then lift it up and push it down again. Okay, to 4. And then to 5. 6. You might say that, well, if you have several buttons for input, and each one of them needs to do this, you did, you should do a sub-module. So you make a sub-module definition, and use that definition to make multiple instances for several buttons. This is very important for real-world problems, because the interfaces to human operations is always a key issue. The videos here are provided as examples, not solutions to labs or exercise that you're going to do. You can work on it on different programs, on different bigger exercises and real-world problems.